Joining me live in the studio for more in-depth assessment uh, of the bill is a senior manager, Anderson Tax, Chiwendu Energy. Chiwendu, thank you very much for spending your Monday afternoon with us. Thank you for having me. First, <clears throat> what's this? Let's go deep into what this means, Finance Bill 2019. What does this, what is this, what does this pretend for Nigeria? Okay, I think it's, I think it's very important to even take a um, um, look at the background of how we, we got to this place. Okay. Um, there has been so much focus on the VAT. Uh, when, you, when you hear people talk about the finance bill, um, I think a lot, a, lot, a lot of focus has been on VAT. But I think it's, it's important to take a step back and even ask ourselves, how did we even get here? Um, now, in 2016, the, the then finance minister set up a committee to look at the national tax policy, tax policy. that was published in 2012. And one of the mandates was to review and update that tax policy. And um, the objective of that tax policy was to um, provide a basis for new tax legislation and, um, and administration. So essentially, this bill is a product of that um, national tax policy, which was approved in 2017 by the Federal Executive Council. Now, um, like I said, there's been so much focus on the bill with respect to the reduction in VAT, but there's a whole lot of uh, information that you can find in the bill that um, that is good news to to investors and Nigerian businesses, particularly the SMEs. We need that good news now. We need yeah. funds in this country. <laughs> yeah. So particularly the SMEs. Um, I'll just touch touch on some of the issues or some of the provisions of the bill. Um, if I look at the companies in tax Act, for instance, for a new company, you know, when you start off a, a, a business. It's very common to have um, a situation where by the first few years you're making, um, you're making losses, um, you're not really doing well, and maybe your revenue is even um, very small. Now what the bill seeks to do is to have a situation whereby um, particularly the SMEs who have revenue uh, of less than 25 million, you're not required to pay tax. Mm. Now obviously um, your business will, will grow with time and when your business grows from 25 million to less than 100 million, your tax rate is 20%. And then of course, when you're categorized as a large company doing more than 100 million, your tax rate then goes up to 30%. So you can see that um, um, there's a plan to support the SMEs and encourage um, compliance. Now, one of the ways of encouraging compliance is to make tax um, very easy and uh, provide some level of certainty. And uh, currently we have several provisions in, of the, ta in the tax law that um, uh, seems to have um, created seems to create a lot of controversy. There are, there are cases in the in the courts on various issues that we have uh, in the company income tax. Act, for instance, for example, when you take a uh, take a look at section 19, and um, there's what we call excess dividend tax. Okay. And what that says is that um, for a company, um, it's possible for you to pay a dividend um, out of your retained earning. And retained earning essentially means um, profit that you pay tax before, but you've just kept it in your books and uh, with a plan to distribute to shareholders in the future. Now what we currently have is that at any point that you distribute dividend that is excess of your total profit for a particular year, the taxman will ask you to pay tax on that dividend as if that were your profit for the year. Mm -hmm. Now that's a bit anti, that's, that, that's anti-business. So what the, law seek, the, the bill seeks to do is to remove that provision because it's, uh, I mean, for investors, for, for a company who has paid tax before, what you're essentially telling the person is to pay tax twice on the same, on the same on, uh, e income. So um, th that's on that. Now, for if I, t if I take a look at um, um, the e-commerce business, for instance, I mean, today you can sit in your house and you stream videos and, uh, and all sorts. Now, th those companies are essentially, to some extent, any revenue from Nigeria. You know, so what the bill seeks to do is to bring those companies into an Nigerian tax net so that those companies can, to, to some extent, pay a fair share of, of tax to Nigeria. It sounds very interesting, but I'm looking at the man on the street. He wants to know what this brings on the table for him. Uh, how does this affect, uh, what positives does it have for the man on the street? That's where we go. Now, for the man on the street, if I, if I look at it from, from the SMEs, there are a lot of small businesses in Nigeria. And um, we are all very much aware that Nigerian tax to GDP uh, ratio is about know, is six percent. Now, do, I, I mean, that aiming for nine. Well, <laughs> we're still at six. <laughs> you know, so essentially, what that says to you is that the the ratio of our 
GDP eh, to tax, um, that, that are released to tax receipts, is just about 6%. Now, the informal sector contributes about 50% to Nigerian GDP. So you can imagine how much, I mean, how much that sector contributes to the GDP. But when, when compared to the tax that comes from that uh, uh, sector, it's, 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 like, it's like zero. Mm -hmm. Now, so for the SMEs, what the bill seeks to do is to, first of all, reduce your tax compliance burden. From, from VAT perspective, for instance, if your revenue is less than 25 million, mm, you're not required to, to file tax return. So, but you're required to register for, uh, you register for taxes, and in opening your bank account, you're required to show your tax identification, identification number. So what the FRIS does is to monitor you for a while, because obviously the FRIS will have access to um, using the BVN and your tax identification number to know how your business is doing, and over time, they can tell how well you're doing. So that's on the SME's part. Yeah. Now, if I look at the common man on the street who eats basic food item, currently we don't have, uh, there's been a lot of controversy around what constitutes basic food item. Now, what the bill has done is to sort of define basic food item to include the common thing that we all eat, like bread, like cereal, uh, water, yam, and all that. So, basic food item is exempt from VAT. So the common man on the street, for instance, will, have not, will not have to worry about paying VAT. That's a good one. When they're buying basic food item. Hmm. So, so in that, to answer your question, for that common man, the issue of, of VAT on what they consume has been resolved based on the bill. Hmm. But one thing I notice is our tax system, there has been issues around it. And that's why I think that committee was set up the national policy and all of that yeah. to review it. Now, with all of these developments, double taxation, supporting SMEs. Uh, what are the positives and how soon are we going to get this coming in? Nigerians are not patient people. You know what it means. Yeah. Because now we also intend to generate more revenue for the 2020 budget. Yeah. No, no, no. Like I said, um, one of the ways to encourage tax compliance is yeah. to make it very simple. Great. Now, so um, currently we you have a lot of people who are in business but don't pay taxes or haven't even registered. And when you ask them questions, they tell you that if I register, the taxman will come after me. So now you have a bill that says, okay, when you start off your business and your revenue is at a certain level, you don't have to pay tax. So that gives you some form of comfort yes. that um, by virtue of just registering for taxes, I don't necessarily have to pay taxes, depending on how well I'm doing. So what that would do is it encourage a lot of people to you know, register for taxes because it then removes that fear that registration is equal to you paying taxes. And over time, when you have more people in the tax net, the idea is to grow the tax base. Yep. Like I said, the informal sector is, is not even taxed, if at all, very little coming out from, from, from that. And we have a lot of businesses in that, in that area. So what the bill seeks to do is to see how we can encourage a lot of these people to comply register for taxes, file your tax return. You may not necessarily have to pay taxes depending on the, the volume that you're doing. So over time, you have more people in the tax net and then we can then have more tax revenue. And um, we also expect that this tax revenues will be judiciously used because that's been one challenge. People believe that, yes, I, I always say this, aside from states like Lagos, that you could see one or two things to point to, infrastructure, social amenities. Many believe that government is not doing what is supposed to be done with funds generated from taxation. How do we marry this together? Well, I mean, I totally agree with you. Um, tax is a social contract, like, you, like, like, like we all know. Um, and there's always this conversation as to what should come first. You know, the government should do what they are supposed to do with the tax revenue. Um, the taxpayers are probably saying, I'd like to see the government do what they're supposed to do before I pay tax. So, it's more or less like the chicken and, and egg, the thing. egg which, so comes what, which comes first. <laughs> you know, but we all need to understand that um, for the government to even do what we want them to do, they need the tax revenue. And um, it's important for you as an individual or as a company to first of all be a, um, a corporate citizen, a right standing citizen, pay your taxes. And that way you are now in a, you are in a better position to demand for accountability. Mm. There's so many people who don't even pay taxes, but also complain. I mean, I clearly understand um, the, 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 the point that the government isn't accountable. 
But for us to even make that argument, I think we, we, we need, need to we first, need first of all play our part. Play our part, and then you can then go. You. Then anyway, mine is being deducted from source. <laughs> so there's no way I'm going, I'm going to evade that. <laughs> exactly. I, I keep paying my, that. My, my head as well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let, let's round off this this way. What does this hold for practitioners like you, this finance bill? Is it going to make you guys get more busy? Or what's really going to happen, you know? Well, obviously, that's it. I mean, that's, that is the expectation. <laughs> 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 that's the expectation. But, I mean, like, what we try to do, what we try to say to our clients is to um, take a look at their business, take a look at the bill, and see how this will impact their business. Because um, it's important to look at where you are and, and how this, this bill is going to uh, impact future investments, um, particularly the guys in the oil and gas industry, um, the, guy who, the guys who pay petroleum profit tax, for instance. There's a section of the bill that seeks to remove um, some benefits that we currently have, section 60, that exempts um, dividend declared by those companies from withholding tax. Now, that's going to be taken off. So you're going to have those investors who are looking to make investment to begin to ask themselves if should we still go ahead to make this investment given what we have in the bill so for us as practitioners what we do is to try and look at the bill look at our client businesses and uh, provide comments in, in on areas where we think that the bill will impact our business so that they are proactive to begin to you know put some mitigating measures you know so you don't wake up tomorrow and, and they're waking up to surprises Chiwendu NHE Senior Manager, Anderson Tax. Nice there, breaking it down for us, letting us understand what the finance bill means for us and for Nigerians. I'm very interested in that part, so I'm not going to pay any VAT on yam, on cereals. On, I know Nigerians will be happy to hear that. Chiwendu, thank you very much for your time on the show. It's really great to have you. It's We're going to have you again to come break this down. It's a pleasure. When it becomes a law, shortly we expect that to it's happen. A, it's a